joining me on this hopefully quick video. I'm stepping up to the challenge of Blanca's orchid garden. I also saw Todd's Tropicals is doing an orchid count. So if you're new to my channel, welcome. This will also give you a quick overview of my growing areas outdoors. I'm standing right now on the east side of my patio and we will be going around in a U-turn to the west side. And here on the east side, right now, because there's mostly shade, just a quick pan, some Bidium and Fias included, the Stamfordianum over there. So on this east side, I have a total of 54 orchids, mainly comprising Cattleyas. I do have some Catacetinae up there, mainly Cattleyas though. And the only reason I have Stanhopias here is because currently it's the best and shadiest place for them. So that is my east side. Now let's go over to the deep south. So this is my south, I call it deep south because I have a blooming alley behind me, which is south, but this is further south than my blooming alley. And here I have a total of 29 orchids, which is mainly Rapiculus lalias here under the bench. They usually live on the top, but it is so hot and sunny at the moment, they're more protected down here. And then if we pan over slowly, I have a little corner set up here for Angraecums, for my Holcoglossum Kimberlianum, and any other orchid that I need to address, need to keep an eye on, that needs a lot of light, but not direct sun. So I have this fabulous high-tech umbrella right here, providing them with cool shade while they are in bright light. There we go. My unicorn umbrella, super high-tech, but this is the deep south as well. Basically me just making sure I keep an eye on orchids right here. This is Cousin It, if you're not familiar to my channel. It's a Maxillaria variabilis of epic portions. But yeah, this little area here, from there to my little table over there, 29 orchids in total. And we have some blooms up here on the lofty heights. I'm now in the area I call my blooming alley. This is my Vanda Denisoniana, but she would be one of 123 orchids in this area. So let me see from where I'm stood, if I can pan you around very slowly, we get an overview of my blooming alley, which comprises a lot of Tolumnias at the far wall over there, which is facing west. I have some Neo crosses hanging up. I have another Vanda hanging over there. Here is everything that is a mix, mainly because of its name, the Blooming Alley. Everything that is in bloom, including this Aphyllum, Ceratolabium, and Ceraula combination mount right here. So I'm going to step down and we'll have a closer look. In this south facing Blooming Alley over there, once again, where the Tolumnias are, that is west. Of course, everything that is in bloom comes here because I can see it from the living room where I'm sat. I have mainly dendrobiums, I have some epidendrums, I also have some oncidium species and panaricas up here, and you can see that Francis Fox over there has just opened, and the Leodora Sweet Memory as well. They're fighting for fragrance favors. Yeah, so here also Neostylus crosses, dendrobiums, and Cattleyas, down here are epidendrums, epidendrum crosses, and very big cattleyas are here as well because the east side where I would prefer to have them, unfortunately the shelving isn't spaced the way I have it here, otherwise they wouldn't be occupying so much space in my prime location blooming alley. I also have some renantheras, right there is the monachica in bloom, and here's the citrina in bloom. And then there's different kind of renantheras as well, because they get a lot of light here, but no direct sun as best as I can manage. So we've delved into the depths of my blooming alley. We've moved a little bit in towards this little walkway. And you can see that there are some more ridiculous lalias here because I need to keep an eye on them. And there is an Ampuyathea back there. 
because that is where she's most protected because I'm trying to make sure that she grows her roots out. Very important, the root production. It is definitely a must this time of year. In my blooming alley, whether they are in bloom or not, are also all my summer bloomers because they get a lot of light here, but no direct sun because of the time of year. In winter, this would be floodlit with sunlight. And then I'm gonna move you up really slowly. What else I have going are mounts that live here permanently. From the popcorn haruri over there, all of these are dendrobiums up here, the unicum, Victoria regina, and my first attempt at anosmum over there. So all up here I have dendrobiums hanging and they live here all the time. The angle of the sun does the work for me. Just want to show you two more orchids that are right behind me. So here I have two Brassavola orchids on mounts. We're facing east again. The Denisoniana is up there. You can see her through the trellis. And this is Flagellaris and Perinii. So all these orchids combined together in the blooming alley amount to 123. Now let's go to the west side. We're now in my dining room. This is where orchids are that can't be outside because it's too hot, that I would have to constantly keep moving because how the sun turns around the building. So instead of going through that, here I have complex Phalaenopsis hybrids that are currently in gorgeous bloom. I also have a lot of orchids here that have just arrived. So they are being monitored and taken care of prior to potting up. And as I go around, please forgive the mess. We are really, really in rehab mode here. So these are all bare root new imports that have just arrived that are being taken care of before they get potted up. And that is why there's a lot of a mess right here with all my tubs and my prepared solution. And there is King, that is my Harlequin puppy. Thank you for your patience. He is in training. We've had some accidents with him regarding orchids and I'm not well pleased. So you can see all the tubs there. That is for all the soaking right here, an old towel, because I'm making quite a splash at the moment. Forgive the spider webs. I love my spiders in my pots. But I have a bulbophyllum here. There's also rehab for cuttings and divisions. But mainly this is for the complex Phalaenopsis hybrids in here. And counting all of these that are here, Ah yes, my Paphiopedalums are in here as well because they like bright light, but no direct sun. But the entire total of this space is 67. And there's my Didieri and little seedlings as well that shouldn't be exposed to the elements. So yeah, it's a bit of a messy place in here at the moment, but it works for me. It is functional. It helps me to get the job done. And then after everything is done, there'll be a massive, massive cleanup operation. I also have some Neos here as well. And then if we look outside, there you see that I have a Tourette Vanda, Chao Praia. And behind that is on the same totem pole is a Papilionante. That includes the 67 that I've just mentioned. And then you can see the deep south over there. So that brings us, according to my calculations, to 244 orchids. 244. Well, I have had a lot of losses because I was up to 300. But in the course of many, many years, I've lost some and then I thought, no, I'm not going to replace them anymore enough already. If they don't work well, if they're not happy here, I'm not going to keep trying. I do have some that are doing very well after I've readapted and adjusted their culture. But there are times when you recognize your environment is not conducive to a certain species. It's time to say goodbye.
And that is exactly what I'm going to do right now, but not before I say thank you so very, very much for watching. And Blanca's Orchid Garden, thank you very much for a very innovative idea and letting me hop on the bandwagon to do my orchid count. Total 244 orchids with Ninja Orchids here in Southern Spain. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.